In this video, I go over five add-on controllers to help you add new features to your DJ setup. Find out which ones those are coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. So the first add-on controller that I want to talk about is the one that I use night in and night out whenever I DJ. And that's currently the Tractor Control X1 Mark I. Now, this is the older Tractor Control X1 and I prefer it over the new one because I actually use Serato DJ and not Tractor Pro. So the touch strip features don't really translate from Tractor to Serato, plus having more controls on the actual piece of hardware really makes more sense for my workflow in Serato. Now currently I have the effects mapped out to the top and then I have my actual loop knobs mapped to the first set of knobs in the middle and then I have my beat jump controls mapped to the second set of knobs then I have all my cue points mapped to the bottom section. And all of this does have MIDI lighting out so I can see which cue points are actually active and where I have cue points laid out for each song as well as I can see you know, if my effects are on or off. And this is all possible due to the actual controller editor software that Native Instruments provides as well as a feature within Serato DJ. Now the second controller that I'd like to suggest is another tractor controller and that's the F1. Now I really like this controller and this is probably going to be the next one that I pick up to use with Serato DJ for the fact that I can pretty much map out a lot of the same features I have on my X1 mapped out to the F1 as well. I love the way bigger pads than the smaller buttons that you get on the X1. The pads on the F1 feel a lot better to hit and you're more confident because it's such a bigger pad in comparison to those small buttons and having the bigger lights lets you know uh, visually a lot faster you know where your cue points are or whatever you haven't mapped to. Um, you can see it by sight even in your peripheral. Unlike with the X1 because they're smaller you're, you tend to look down a little bit more to make sure you're hitting the right cue. Now with the F1, you don't get all the buttons that you do on the X1. You actually have faders, which are missing on the X1, so you'd have to map things a little bit differently. So depending on your workflow, this may or may not make sense, but just like the X1, because you have the controller editor software to map the lighting and help map everything out on that controller, it really makes sense to have a controller with the, this much amount of controls on it and the different kinds of controls for your DJ software. I know a lot of DJs out there can just brainstorm and think of ways that they would use something like this. And plus the form factor of both make a lot of sense. They don't take up a lot of room in the booth and fit in a lot of places where some controllers don't. My third suggestion is more for the Serato DJ users out there, but it can be mapped to any software, and that's the Pioneer DJ DDJ SP1. Now this thing pretty much looks like the middle section of, you know, kind of like a Pioneer DJM S9 or the performance section of a Pioneer DJ controller, and for good reason. You get a lot of control with the different pad modes as well as all the different effects knobs and buttons up there. So if you are using Serato DJ, the different pad modes really make sense and you can switch over and get all that different control directly without having to map anything. But for Tractor, even if you had to map everything, because there's so much control on the actual controller and there's so many different knobs and buttons, you can map out a lot of features on this thing. Even for Rekordbox DJ, which has its own mapping as well, if you just plug it in, you're, you're good to go. And even with Virtual DJ, if you have to plug in and map stuff out in any software, it's really possible with this. And it just has so many buttons and those pads feel so good in comparison to even the F1. The softer feel of them just feel really nice to hit. And there's a reason why it's become the standard layout for something like Serato DJ, because it just makes so much sense. And it's so intuitive to have all the different pads, the eight pads and the different modes to get you through the software. It just totally makes sense and makes a really smooth workflow. So if you're a Serato DJ user, I would highly suggest this if you have room in the booth. That's the one thing with the SP1 that it takes up a bunch of room. I would say it takes up a huge footprint, especially in really tight DJ booths. You might not be able to get it out and have it set up and ready to go. So keep that in mind if you work in a lot of booths that don't have a lot of space. The fourth controller that I would suggest is probably my first add-on controller now that I think about it, and that is the Akai Pro MPD Mini. This thing has a really small footprint. You get eight MPC pads and eight encoders, so you don't get a lot of function, but you can really map out a lot of the things that you're gonna be using a lot. Now, personally, I was using this back in the day with Tractor Pro at first, so 
you have eight pads, but you have three different pad modes. So for one pad mode, I would have four cue points each per deck. So I'd have one row be deck one, one row be deck two. And then I would have the knobs control the effects on the actual per deck. So I would have the top row of knobs control the effects bank on top of deck one and the second row, the effects bank on top of deck two. And then on my second actual pad mode, I would have, you know, the, the triggers to turn effects on and off. So you would get a lot of functionality. You might have to scroll through the different pad modes to, to know where you are. And you might have to keep aware of exactly, you know, which pad mode you're in. But if you're on a budget, this thing is super cheap. You can usually find it under $70. It's just really straightforward to map. It's really simple. It does have some instructions in it so you know which notes are which as far as MIDI goes. So if you're a little bit deeper in MIDI knowledge, you know, you can kind of tweak that as well. But if you're just looking for a controller to, you know, control your cue points, maybe control your looping or any small number of functions and you want something that's small that you know is going to fit anywhere, the MPD Mini is really a solid go-to. And finally, my last suggestion is another controller that I used in the past that I still keep in my bag just in case. And those are the Novation Dicers. Now, I was using the Novation Dicers all the way back to Serato Scratch Live, and I still keep them in my bag if I don't have room for my X1. I, I know I can set up some Dicers, plug it in, and have them ready to go with Serato DJ. Everything's mapped out from cue points to rolls to loops. And with the secondary modes, and dice tools. You can have even have even more modes. So you can turn effects on and off. You can have your beat jumps going. You can have so much more control with that little piece of free software. And even without it, you can have those secondary functions. If you hold down one button, you can still scroll through and do those secondary functions. So you get a lot of control and it's a really small package. They fit right over the 45 adapter for all the turntables out there. And if you're using it in the CDJ, one thing that I recently just saw that I thought was really a smart way to have these things positioned, if you're using them with CDJs, just put them right over the screen of the CDJ 2000 Nexus. You're, it's not a touch screen, and you're really not using the screen if you're using it with Serato. So having it right there above the deck is a perfect place to have these dicers and have perfect access to your cue points, loops, and loop rolls at a moment's notice. So that's it for my five suggestions for add-on controllers. So question of the day, which add-on controllers do you use? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click right here to subscribe to this channel. Or if you'd like to watch more content, go ahead and click on that video right there. And thank you for watching P.TV, where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.